Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're listening to this. Welcome to the first episode of the Level Artist Podcast. Welcome aboard, um, y'all. We appreciate you coming by. I am your host, Bodio Papula. With me, I have the wonderful uh, Kaylee. Hello. <laughs> this, <laughs> that's me. I'm here. <laughs> Present and accounted for. And we also have with us Mr. Andy Gibby Gibson. A man of many names. Hello. Ooh. I get a last name. Kaylee doesn't get a no, last name. No, I don't name. need one. It's fine. No, I like it, the air of mystery. You're like Sting or Prince. There's only one. There's only because the one. it's all you could afford at the beginning of your career. Yay! <laughs> we have limited number of text for this audio format, and my name takes up most of it. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> we just don't want to pay to transcribe everybody's name. Exactly, dude. This is on a budget. <laughs> Had to make the budget cuts where we could. <laughs> <laughs> um but anyway we are the liberal artist podcast um a bunch of uh i don't know how to say i want to call us educated folks but that might be giving us a little too much credit you know um a wingnut a dork a knucklehead mcspatatron but most of all i'm 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 a liberal arts graduate yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, a bunch of us with liberal arts degrees got together. It's like, hey, what are we like qualified to do outside of working at a Starbucks? Not much. We could talk about media and shit. Yeah. Nice that you have it. We learned how to analyze things. We right. learned how to watch things critically and also just watch them for fun. Right. Maybe. So, so why not do both and then scream about it in the endless void that is the internet? Because who's ever done that online before, right? right. No, no, no. This is unique. It's, it's not like there's tons and tons of YouTube channels all dedicated to video essays that all have some sort of animated uh, avatar for themselves that you know it's getting bad when they cross their arms and they furrow their brows. It's not like there's billions of those already out there. Except I want to make one for myself that's just stills of me like with my camera right. where i just do all those poses and then just copy it like drop it in that way i'm pretty sure that we were shown a video like that in health class about the effects of drugs back in seventh grade huh <laughs> <Excuse> <laughs> anyways <laughs> no 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 no. there's no anyways you have to go into detail there sir <laughs> there was a strange video in like seventh grade health where I guess they just didn't have the money for a camera to film it. This is a video from, like, the 80s. Right. And it was a police officer talking to the audience, but it was pictures of him. Okay. Not video of him talking. Oh, no. There was audio, and he was just talking, so it would be like, <laughs> Hello, I'm here to talk to you. And then it cut... <laughs> Change pose. Five seconds later to a different frame to a different picture of him. And even as a dumb little 12-year-old, I was just like... Something is very strange here, and I don't know anything about channels of communication or exactly how people are supposed to communicate with each other. I'll get to that in like 10 years or so, but something is very off about this. This ain't and anyways, it, Chief. This ain't it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I guess that's kind of how I started in liberal arts. I, I needed someone to explain to me what the hell I just watched. <laughs> what did I just in, watch? <laughs> in health class, and somehow that spurned me into my media studies degree at Auburn University. War damn, how about it? I have a job, so I can't complain. Hey. Dang. Yeah. There you <laughs> he go. got me there. Um... <laughs> A job in my field? Who would have ever believed it? Right. I make educational uh, videos. I help support a studio for a university, and it's pretty cool because my boss wears flip-flops and Hawaiian shirts, so I'm pretty glad that I don't have to wear a tie like I used to. Uh, how about y'all? How, how'd y'all get into your degrees and your interests in liberal arts, and how'd you get around to it? I think my sort of foray into it was always at a level of performance and something about characters always stuck out to me as a child. Um, I was that dumb little kid who 
would as like a four-year-old i'd be like i have a disney song stuck in my head i've got to go tell every other table at the olive garden and give them a performance (laughs) and they're going to love this uh just a wonderful little red-headed child singing into her breadstick I, not just into my bread stick, but just like I would get up from the table we were sitting at, like my parents and like their friends, and I would go to a different table and be like, "Hi, I'm the entertainment tonight." <laughs> um, and then I went to uh, I was homeschooled for the, until third grade, and then I went to real school, and I developed horrible social anxiety, and hey. uh, but still really loved like performing and stuff, and found like you know let's bring it down a little bit and actually there's a craft to some of this and that's where i got sort of into theater and i think at the same time into voice acting and voice like the idea of playing with voices and being characters through that um because that's how i try to retain things except it usually doesn't work except for very non-important trivial quotes references lines etc um but funnily enough, it's like we all met there. Uh, well, except for you two, I guess. Uh, I also went to uh, Auburn University, uh, earned my BFA in performance, uh, studied acting, studied a, uh, a minor in media studies and communication, and get to continue that at a graduate level in my master's in mm. uh, theater and performance studies, uh, where hopefully I'll be focusing on the sort of bridge between digital theatrical like content in performance as how it relates to theater as we think we understand it from a more like this is what theater is where is it going where is it evolving into uh thanks to things like streaming and twitch and tiktok and all kinds of other like accessible performance channels uh as well as neurodivergence in theater because pretty much every casting director and every other person that's been like here here's a character analysis they are like this right now and me sort of going are we sure they are or is that a neurotypical interpretation of how they are because me personally i don't have any sort of professional diagnosis but like having thinking about a situation that this character would be in i don't know if they're actually that upset or if they're just shutting down right like (laughs) are you sure about that yeah, let's let's just dissociate on stage. Is that how um, you uh, <laughs> justify every single musical? Like somebody breaking into song in the middle of a like a fucking field? You know what I'm saying? Actually, see, I don't know if it's even like musicals like that. I think there's some fun, like more extreme sort of like, okay, this is a heightened sense of that if you want to follow that interpretation. Yeah. But like trying to work a scene for a dramatic play that was like, she's so torn about having to leave this person like she knows that this is the right thing to go do but she doesn't want to leave this person behind i'm like yeah but she is masking so hard she is trying to keep this guy from falling off the deep end with her she's trying to make their last moment together happy right she is she cannot be sad for him right right now like (laughs) bitch is masking like (laughs) She is dying on the inside. She is like, I know I'm going to die at the end of this, but like, I cannot let them know. Like that to me is what I'm reading is what's happening. Cause that's what happens when I'm trying to like, I'm having a depressive episode, but it's fine. We're great. It's hunky dory. I'll just eat some ice cream and cry under a blanket for tonight by myself. (laughs) (laughs) Except that's not how Antigone ends. Or, or in that <laughs> giant uh, Taco the Wizard hat back there. It's big enough that you can just hide yes. under it. My, I do need to actually get some like hooks or like a shelf or something to like mm. display it properly. But right now he just lives behind me. An ever-present reminder that I need to actually embellish it with trim and all sorts of nonsense. Um, and also my theater training extends outside of, you know, educational training and into cosplay Kaylee cosplay crafting hey. yeah and she's very good at and it and she is super good at it when i'm not lazy i think i am i suppose <laughs> <laughs> it's been like we're coming off covid man like you ain't got to be mm-hmm. like super into it right now you know nah it's nah. you don't have to be super into anything right now Fact. but you know 
Big facts. Except this podcast. Welcome to the Live Without Tales ah! podcast. <laughs> Wait, we've got one more. Bo, Hi. tell us about you in liberal arts and how you don't actually have a liberal arts degree. Wow. Because you've got a real degree. Are we calling me out He's on episode one? He's got a real one? job. Shit. I figure we may as well not gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss our entire fan base but from I the start. I love girl bossing people. Give me what I do we best. Can, we can still do that. We can do one of the G's at a time, but not all of them. Gate boss, light keep, girl, but. <laughs> um, so I grew up in a family of four children. Uh, I'm three out of, I'm number three out of four. Uh, now I'm three out of, fuck, six. Yeah, there's six <laughs> of us now. Three out of um, four. Okay. Yeah, there's too many little little motherfuckers running around um <laughs> so it was super hard to stand out um when i was a kid and i was you know my big brother was like the football star my my big sister was like super super smart and my little brother outgrew me at age 13 him 13 me 16 <laughs> which is like all right cool no. fine <laughs> so Rude. Um, what did i get out of this genetic lottery nothing absolutely <laughs> nothing but um for me i was the only one who was it started with like singing of course in like church and whatnot i was the only one uh who could carry a tune um so that kind of evolved over the years uh after a while i became uh i learned how to like really really look into things and think about hey why do these people think this way or why did why did somebody make this choice in like this show or movie or whatever uh which is the really nice way of saying i became an asshole but i found a venue that let me do it without uh just being the only asshole in the room which is fun hey why'd you suck in that movie yeah exactly it's like i'm 12 why am i a better actor than you sir um but yeah uh like gibby was saying uh, I don't actually have a liberal arts degree. I have a liberal arts minor. There, I said it. Uh, oh. I minored in theater in college. We all went to college together. All university, War Eagle, get dunked on. Um, my my <laughs> primary degree is in industrial systems engineering, and that's the last I'm going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the not fun part, but it is the money part. Yeah. He may not have a liberal arts degree, but he is a liberal artist all the same. In my heart. Oh, in my heart. <laughs> and it all comes from the heart because none of this comes from right. the brain, baby. And also... F believe it, believe it, believe it! And also fuck being a starving artist, am I right? I'm like, I, I like yes. to eat. <laughs> yeah. It's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah, we, we both get that. Right. For sure. I mean, I, I I worked the corporate life. I I recall uh, how that feels, and I'm somewhere between the corporate life and you know the the proper bohemian artist life. Uh, I'd take that over the retail life. Right. Yeah. I mean, sure. I, I get that. I get that for sure. But like being in a university uh, and with people who have decades of experience in making videos and making online courses while coming from degrees uh, and backgrounds. Like ha one of my bosses having a, a degree in theater from Yale, uh, it's, it, it shapes things interestingly that uh, we've got people that know about performance. We've got people that know about website design and graphic design, photography. Those aspects, I think, all play into learning about perspective and learning about uh, seeing things from other people's vantage points, which I think is what art is really all about. Uh, and we have quite the topic today to discuss for something here, here. that is very different from Western audiences. You know, we were, we, we gathered at the table to discuss Oh uh, man, this is our first episode. We really want to start out with like something really cool that like describes us and shows us characters and this and that and the third and and we went with weeb shit and these two <laughs> geniuses went with weeb shit. <laughs> I 
We're talking about anime! We're talking about yes! anime. Yes! <laughs> We're talking about how it attracted us with cool robots and big action and flashing lights and how it dragged us down into the murky depths of degeneracy. Right. But at least there's anime titties. You've you know? got a point there, Kaylee. <laughs> you know, I didn't think about that. Um, Pixar Pixar saw eventually what was going on over there, and that's how we got such beautiful, astounding women like <laughs> Mrs. Incredible. That's definitely a phrase and... for it. <laughs> it's a phrase for it. But none can compare to the original masters. <laughs> yes, it, it's the dichotomy of do we look at things from a critical arts perspective and the objectification of female bodies mm -hmm. or do we just say to ourselves anime titties exactly mm. <laughs> the duality of man <laughs> 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 i think it's currently one of my favorite discourses mm -hmm. right now is like at an age where Stuff like ideas like that are becoming more prevalent as people, you know, disseminate the concepts right. and be mm -hmm. like, hey, this is why some of this stuff, like, while it's like a thing of its time and we could still like enjoy it for that, here are things that kind of moving forward, we've sort of gone, hey, maybe, eh. Huh. However, animated. <laughs> <laughs> Salutations and welcome to context corner where we define nerdy words for normal people. Today's definitions pertain to the art of Japanese animation. To begin, shonen. Stories of beefy boys punching things instead of attending therapy. Shoujo. Magical girls doing magical things like making the animation budget disappear after one transformation scene. Isekai. Protagonists discover a beautiful, dangerous world in which they must survive without developing any character whatsoever. Baka. You'd know what it is if you weren't so stupid. Baka. Waifu. Your favorite anime girl. Never forget, yours is always better than everyone else's. Weeaboo, or weeb, for brevity. An obsessive Western fan who is convinced they'd be welcome in Japanese society. Their hygiene is often questionable. Hentai. Oh, just Google it. Do it. Come on, do it. Google the hentai. Don't don't forget to include big milf mommy milkers. I, no, I, I think mm, I think the that, context I think the the context clues are pretty pretty good there, Kaylee. Yes. Leave it to the asexual to bring up that term. Exactly. Of you know. Oh goodness. That's that's what I'm here for because I don't feel the ramifications. <laughs> I just get to throw a. I get to throw out a joke and then leave. Uh, <laughs> there are no consequences for my actions. Bye bye. Uh, <laughs> God let me live another day, and now it's your problem. Uh, ha ha. Disgusting. A <laughs> uh, bow as our most seniored member in the field of oh, fuck. of anime as well as age. Why don't you tell us about <laughs> how you got into Man, it? Man, so you, you're going to have me talking about, like, fucking 80s and 70s and 90s anime <laughs> up in here. So I think I got I to gotta think back, right? So my introduction to the subject was actually, like, way, way, way back in the year. Fuck, 1997, I think. I was, like, four. Woo! Um, <laughs> And... One of my uncles had like a bunch of Speed Racer VHSs. Nice. Here he comes. Here comes Speed Racer. I did not give a shit about it. I, honestly, <laughs> honestly, I didn't understand what was happening. I was just like, that dude talks funny. Anyway, <laughs> um, I with most people going from there, I think like most people, my biggest foray, foray into anime at the start was... Um, with Pokemon. Pokemon. Pokemon's one of those like phenomena that like mm -hmm. people don't even count it as their first anime just because of how like mainstream it was. Man says with a giant Snorlax watching behind him. That Snorlax is larger than most children. It's impressive. It's whatever. <laughs> but 
I think the thing that really I really recognized is, hey, this is a different form of storytelling or like this is this just feels different was um, it was Tenshi Muyo for me. Hmm. How do I describe Tenshi Muyo? It's kind of batshit crazy, but it's definitely like a harem anime. Um, a hmm. little bit of slice of life in there. Uh, I'm a I'm a child of like that tsunami generation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, mm-hmm. uh, Tenshi was one of the shows on tsunami. You know, you get like your real chill. This is a this is the hot spring episode. This is us in the house and somebody pissed off the cat. Oh no, what do we want to do? And then you hard cut to Dragon Ball screaming, punching motherfuckers in the face. You know. <laughs> um, <laughs> So even as like a younger viewer, were you able to interpret that anime, which was made for, you know, a completely different audience, had different tropes and different expectations than like the media you had gotten used yeah, to with cartoons? Yeah, especially because at that same time, the other shit I was watching in terms of cartoons was like Cartoon Cartoon Friday's affair. You know, your um, Courage the Cowardly Dogs, your Ed Ed Nettie's, your Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Lab, all that good stuff. So watching anime, watching something that wasn't just like, how do I say this? Watching something where the state of the world didn't have to be revert to the same at the end of 11 minutes. You know what I'm saying? It's like we go through the whole 22 minutes and the state of the world is different. Time has passed like um, in a measurable way. Goku can now do five other things that he couldn't do three episodes ago. You know what I mean? So the fact that it didn't have to go back to the status quo, like in a sitcom sense, right. every episode was interesting and different. Yeah, it felt different and cool. And then, you know, you get more and more into anime titties. You watch a lot, a lot of bad anime. There was a number of years, I'm not afraid to say, in my um, edgy teen days where it was like, if it wasn't sexual or bloody, I didn't give it the time of day. <laughs> um, and again, watched uh, watched a lot of bad anime in those times, bro. Those were those were dark times. <laughs> give us give us just one. The hill we were willing to oh, die man. on, and for what? <sighs> just one, just one. What's the what was the worst? <sighs> I'll give you two, because I know <gasps> the the weebs will hate these, or the weebs will hate me for saying these. There's Queen's Blade, which is what if we had a Final Fantasy esque fighting tournament, but everybody's a big titty waifu, and you can't <laughs> trip over a rock without your boobs spill- spilling out. Boing. So teenage boy, oh, yeah. meets meets yeah. big titty anime oh, yeah. show. Oh yeah, uh, with violence. Yes, I, I, enough, I, I must enough say, violence. With violence. I must say, I'm shocked. Yeah, let me hit you with the second I'm one. I'm shocked that worked. Let me hit you with the second one. Um, <laughs> well, fuck, what's it called? This anime called Psycho No Quasar. All right, all right, all right. So rolls off the tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's another another death game slash tournament anime. You know, really cool. All the people have uh, powers based on the periodic table of elements. You know, it sounds mm. it sounds awesome, right? There's a guy who like yeah. Um, uses sulfur to like trick people in the rooms and make them pass out. There's a guy who uses carbon and he like manipulates carbon to turn into a scythe and cut motherfuckers up. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool, right? I'm gonna give you one guess. What are they? Uh, what is their power um, fueled by? It... Titties. Close. Uh oh. Uh oh. Breast Uh-oh. milk. No! no, it's a king. Shit. I, I no. was wild, bro. That was one of the first ones I remember saying, "Like I shouldn't be watching this." Clicks to episode <laughs> six. <laughs> and here we are nowadays with an anime uh, depicting the relationship of a, I, I think, almost like out of high school couple and he's interested in a girl and she's like i don't know i have a secret what is it i'm secretly a fucking japanese military battle neck disguised as a 17 year old school girl (laughs) see that makes me far less uncomfortable than (laughs) (laughs) it's so ridiculous 
<laughs> so, Bo, tell me about uh, what you're into today and what you're not going to be embarrassed about 10 years from now. Like you <laughs> <were> then. <laughs> no, man, I'm bad about like watching anime now. Um, I mostly read manga. It's weird, man. You go through those phases of like you first get introduced to shit. Then you're like, I just need like the craziest, most wild stuff ejected straight in my veins. And now I like the stuff is like, this is just like a nice story about like two kids who are like finding out they're in love and like it's really nice and sweet. But then at the same time, I'm also reading the there's so many like isekai anime and shit out right now. Isekai, for those who don't know, is basically I was killed by usually a truck because truck drivers are just like rampant in Mm -hmm. japan i guess and now i'm in like a video game world where i have an op power um i read like two of those because there's too many and they all feel the same um Mm -hmm. still on my one piece shit think i will be for the rest of time (laughs) probably um so it's a it's a mix never gonna end right it's never gonna end so it's a mix between like classic shonen stuff for me as well as just like really sweet really like chill low stakes manga i think it's really funny because i kind of picked up from sort of the next chapter of like where where Bo sort of started moving into is where i started picking stuff up in because i i think the first like anime i remember like again outside of pokemon because that was on Cartoon Network in the daytime. <laughs> so it was all like, we did see that as kids. I didn't really recognize, I guess, that it was Japanese. I just knew this is a very different style from a lot of the other cartoons here. But again, we were coming out of the like cartoon cartoons and new stuff was coming into Cartoon Network uh, and Nickelodeon too. So it was that like, okay, maybe this is just a style thing, said little six-year-old clueless me. Um, I remember Hamtaro on Yo. Cartoon Network. I loved him. If we Taro. work together, it's much better. <laughs> it's so <laughs> cute. Um, and, but I think the first like, oh, this is different for me was I, my parents had a TV in their bedroom. I did not. I wasn't allowed to. So if Same. I wanted to like, if I wasn't feeling great, I'd go like pass out in their room watching TV and they would eventually like move me out and put me to bed. But I remember waking up, like, Cartoon Network was running stuff, and I woke up at, like, a mm. 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock sort of thing. And there was something on, like, this girl wandering in this strange place. She was trying to find her parents, and all these weird characters were, like, getting in her way. But I kept trying to fight sleep to stay up and watch it. And at the time, I had no idea what it was, and I couldn't find a name for it, couldn't see it again. And then years later... I learned that it was Spirited Away. Oh. And I love that movie it's a good so one. much. It's a very good one. <laughs> However, I guess my first like actual like anime anime that I'm like, I made the decision to get into this was Kingdom Hearts. That doesn't count. <laughs> no, we're not having this debate. I know, we're it doesn't count, but it debate. was the, disgusting. It, it was sort of the like gateway that led me back into that sure. side of things. Like the Kingdom Hearts fandom was just sort of plugging itself into weird places on like Deviant right. Art and other like fan communities. Yep. I've seen um, your Deviant Art. That was I I'm familiar <laughs> with your friend fiction. No, but like again, it, this was 2008, 2009. So this was finally a time where, like, you grew up watching things like Pokemon or Beyblade or Digimon, and now here you go. We've made this a lot more accessible if you don't have somebody that already has these things from a video store. Mm -hmm. Like, the internet is now, like, here's a place you can stream these things. Here's a place you can pirate these (laughs) things. It's called YouTube. Everything's in 240p. Yeah. YouTube. 40p part (laughs) one of three and maybe you get lucky and you find all three parts in english maybe that's how i watched my favorite anime clone high (laughs) 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 um but that was so that was sort of my like gateway into like meeting people and especially 2008 like that late 2000s was when fan communities were becoming Mm. so much more prevalent and cons 
we're becoming more of a like this isn't just for like hardcore geeks and star trek fans like that's what i knew like conventions in that sense to be and here was a place for people to like meet and be like hey have you seen this this is really good or my cosplay is from this like you should check it out if you like it um so I think the first thing's like actual anime that I remember watching, and I can't tell what I started first. They just sort of exist in tandem to me. Um, were Lucky Star, yep. which is very cute shoujo slice of life, very fun, quirky character, friend group dynamics. Um, <laughs> and Higurashi. Isn't that like <laughs> the one where everybody dies all the time? Yes. Like in like weird, super like... Gibby for... And listeners, for context, it's effectively like if you're familiar with the Final Destination movies, where people are just like yes. dying left and right from like normal things. Higurashi's mm-hmm. uh, something like that. Like eventually, you learn that there is a character uh, not from this world or for like a more supernatural place who is trying to stop these events from happening, but something keeps I think affecting they time. Made it recently. And so. You know, they did reboot it, I think. I haven't watched it, but I'm really curious about how it, like, because it looked okay. It's that similar, like, when they redid Fruits Basket, they just sort of went updated style. It's cleaner and prettier, but I don't know let how me, well Let me put animated. it this way. There were a lot of Linkin Park uh, AMVs made. <laughs> yes. Shit, I think that's something that we need to take just a brief side discussion to talk about. What is it with teenagers and edgy music like Linkin Park. Bro, it was 2007. It was those, a wild time. It was the Wild West. They would put those songs with videos from anime. <laughs> what is it that made the aesthetic spirit of that a line that you would take Japanese media from the 80s and new metal hip hop rock from the mid 2000s and smush them together and put it on YouTube. I will say there's something about the 80s 90s aesthetic of anime that fits that like metal and like hard edge of like punk and pop punk music of that time because you had like you had your that sort of characteristic trademark 90s and late 80s style of like You had weird body proportions sometimes, but you did have these like imposing figures, dramatic silhouettes and very like specific character design. Usually, again, these were characters fighting with one another or in some form of a battle against themselves or against another enemy where you had the tools to do that with. And you had these really cool fight sequences or character arcs that landed in that deep, dark brooding place of trying to do better be better change something um that it started in that sort of ballpark of like yeah yeah i feel that like something is not right here and i want to like fix something i wish something wasn't broken and so you resonate that idea of the music with that without really thinking about how this is going to look together. And then five years later, you go back and look at it and go, oh my God, this is so cringy. I just think nobody understands me like Vegeta and Drowning Pool. So yeah. I'd appreciate it if you didn't try to judge me, <laughs> sir. I'm an anti-hero and I, I listen on my iPod shuffle <laughs> to things that I illegally yep. downloaded that all will reduce my hearing yep. to nothing by the time I'm 24. Sasuke is my spirit animal. It was that or it was a YouTube poop. There was no in between. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but no, but I, I think like I had sort of a like three quarters of like, I start with something really cute in shojo, something really niche and graphic like Higurashi and then Bleach was the first like piece of like shonen that I touched. And I love Ble- like I think I abandoned the others. I did finish <laughs> Lucky Star and I finished what was out of Higurashi at the time like later, but I just dove right into Bleach once I started that because Bleach oh died. my god, it was so good. And then I kept getting through seasons as they came out up until like I tried to watch 11 or 12. I was waiting for some form of access to show right. up on the internet somewhere. Um but at that point, I was already like, oh, my God, we're still in a filler. 
I don't have time for this anymore. When bleachers stop after Soul <laughs> Society, and then it's like, all right, no, nothing else matters. We're done here. These words mean nothing to Good. me. Good. <laughs> I do want to go back and rewatch it, like just as like a let's get through this, and also let's see comparatively, like don't. Was there something here at all or not? There wasn't. <laughs> so where are you today, then, Kaylee? What do you watch? What do you uh, like to Honestly, interpret? Today, I'm sort of in a weird cross space of I feel like there is so much backlog that I missed that I want to go back. Like I did. I remember watching Trigun yep. on a friend's recommendation and I loved that show so much. I really, really loved the like characters in that world. And yeah, it was still that sort of like at a base level, there's something very simplistic about this story arc. But the world and the characters made it fun. Um, but like, there's a lot of, I feel like, what people would consider the sort of classic classics um, that I want to go back and pick up. Um, and I think there's, I've, I've slowed down as far as like keeping up with new stuff, especially because this market has very quickly become oversaturated. Like, anime hit a boom in the 20 teens. And suddenly you've just got all of these studios cranking out content that it's really hard to keep up with unless you are die hard about this stuff um but like there's some new things that i have on my list like i still need to watch a lot of the like movies like that's one thing that's also becoming more popular is like not just this is a movie for a series but like we're making movies again be just because anime style like your name I is been on my list for so long, and I for not just had the that, but they're releasing it. them in the West and dubbing them and whatnot. Yeah, it's yeah. it's becoming accessible, not just out of Miyazaki and whimsy, right. brought to you by Disney. Um, but that and like a few other niche things that I get a chance to stumble into. Like I'm so excited for whatever season two of Devils Apart Timer comes out. I love fun stuff like this where it's that. We've established a lot of tropes leading up to this point in anime. Now, how can we just absolutely fuck with them? Or, like, take a really ridiculous kind of idea and make it surprisingly appealing? Or take something very small. Like, Yuri on Ice is one of my favorite, like, newer pieces of, of anime that I've watched. And even now it's sort of like, eh, it's not new, but, like, ye. Um... It's so beautiful. And it's this really nice appreciation for like small moments between characters. And like, we can make these stakes as big and dramatic as we feel like we need to when the competition is happening. But like, there's just a lot of really small moments and details that like, <laughs> it's so cute. I love it. You're newest to the table of all of this. You've been giving everybody the third degree. Now it's your turn. Yep. Yep. Well, there'll be some repetition, let me tell you that, but uh I I think uh -huh. I am certainly I'm certainly the least experienced in the medium of all of us, and I can tell you a little bit about that. As I said with repetition, we were all that right age that we all got indoctrinated into the medium by a certain Nintendo-based property known as Pokemon. Pokemon! in that there were lots of flashing colors, cool animals, but drawn in a style you'd never seen before. At a young age of around six or so, I was also getting into uh, a, a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! as well as uh, later on, because of the access at six in the morning, thanks to Toon Disney, as it was known at the time, I started watching uh, Digimon as well, which became my big thing. And, you know, uh, a couple years later, being raised in a more southern household and coming into the TV room and seeing giant demons and devils on screen, uh, it was a little bit frowned upon. And my parents suggested, maybe you shouldn't watch this. And I said, OK, SpongeBob's on. I'll be fine. <laughs> so I got out of it for a while, which is a period that. Now, which is a pattern that you'll definitely see across my whole exploration of the medium. I really didn't check it out again until I would say maybe 10th grade, where we start to dip our uh, 
toes in the water a little bit with watching Avatar on Netflix, wow. which everybody will say, wow. that doesn't count. Wow. I, I missed the original Avatar just because I wasn't into like more fantasy. Yeah, that's shows not what's wrong with young. what you just said, though. I know. I know. Avatar's not a real anime. It's not anime. <laughs> It's not anime. It's anime-inspired Western media from Nickelodeon. <laughs> it has, it has tropes. It has themes. It's inspired. It is not technically it. That's why I said I was dipping my toes into it. Sure. That is the very shallow end of things. Mm. If we want to be more specific and actually correct, so that I don't get my house raided by a bunch of overweight pimply dudes with waifu pillows and samurai Damn, swords. Damn, baby, let them know. Shit. Let them know. Oh, dear. Put on deodorant. Damn. Do it. Been to enough cons. You're gross. I, I, I say that as somebody who might have forgotten to put on deodorant today. <laughs> <laughs> You're part of the problem. Uh, hypocrite. Hypocrite. Uh, but Attack on Titan <laughs> was my first proper uh. anime, which came at the perfect time for me as a teenager who thought that Quentin Tarantino was God's gift to cinema. <laughs> See, this is my favorite thing where it's like, you get to know a lot about a person and where they are today based on their first anime. But no, exactly. I think that makes sense for you. Like as an attack on Titan as your first, like, all right, here we go. This is direct yep, from it, Japan. It's direct from anime. Japan. But what made it easy for me was that it was told from almost a Eurocentric uh, style mm -hmm. in that most of the characters are that world's kind of version of Caucasian. There's a lot of European uh, style aesthetic to They're it. German as fuck. And yeah, it's very German. The theme song's yeah. part, it, it opens in German. That ain't Japanese <laughs> that they're singing. Saturday Dust and Wind Sinega. <laughs> anyway, what uh, what attracted me to it was that it had a very dark tone and it had um, a very grave sense of the world that things are bad. And I was very much into dystopian media at the time, oh, yeah. which happens to a lot of teenage boys that were raised in idyllic, perfect households <laughs> that just went, no, yeah. there needs to be more, more violence. And there needs to be, <laughs> I, I, I need something cool Chaos. and edgy. I need characters to die. I need there to be stakes. Are you shocked that like a year later I got into Game of Thrones? No. Not in the slightest. <laughs> I thought I thought it was gonna be the most like cushy, sweet little fit. Like and a year later, I got into Haruhi Suzumiya. <laughs> I don't even know those words. <laughs> Oh, what, no. what happened is I watched it all through very quickly. I got into the style of it and I started searching for something mm. else like that. And I didn't find it <laughs> because you know what a friend tried to no. get me into after that? Tell me. Neon Genesis Evangelion. Oof. Oh, a good, a good choice, but also. I made it ooh, about 10 ooh. episodes into that and I said to myself, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things Stranger. were, you know, just from being the perspective of a teenage boy and saying, there's a lot more angst in this. I mean, I'm a teenage boy, but let's put some limits here. Let's be serious for a second. We've got cool robot stuff, but also, like, I, I have to deal with existentialism? No way, man. I'm going to go play Halo and Call <laughs> of Duty instead. And yet at the same time... Within my teenage boy brain, I said to myself, I don't like the way that they're sexualizing these female characters. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> boobs. But at the same time, I don't like this. Something about this is off. Little did I know that was my first media criticism from a feminist perspective. Who would have ever guessed? Ding, ding, ding. But I got out of anime for a little while. I took a quick dip back into the pool with Cowboy Bebop. Again edgy but not too edgy and smart storytelling and everybody agrees that it's good yep. it just is what it is it's a good yep. show it's got some cool themes and cool aesthetic but it's not gonna offend anybody yep. i watched that at the end of 
high school, beginning of college, and then I stopped again, and then I didn't watch anything <sighs> for a good while. What really got me back into the medium during quarantine, you people got me into JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, <laughs> and I'll never forgive you for it. I'm actually very surprised, though. You haven't seen Full Metal Alchemist I haven't seen yet, either have Full you? Metal Alchemist. Mm. I've never watched an episode of Dragon Ball. Okay. I've never ah. watched Bleach or most things that came on Toonami. But let me tell you what. Yeah. I'll fight anybody that says that any of them are better than JoJo. Now I've gotten in hard with the fandom. <laughs> and I know there are better things, <laughs> but I won't admit it. Not in a public forum and certainly not on you a podcast. You might be right, but I refuse. <laughs> you can't be you can't be wrong if you refuse to relent, right? Exactly. I, I think I think what got me into the show is that it's got a lot of the tropes of the traditional like uh protagonist driven storyline that we talk about a lot with shonen but it's it allows itself to be you know not serious all the time right and there's moments where it's serious but the way that uh its creator araki uh goes and uh just takes these tropes and puts them through a totally different filter is very fascinating to me his use of style color Posing, 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 posing of like kind of kind of exploring that masculine versus feminine dynamic yeah. where you have these guys who are built like 300 pound linebackers, but they're posing almost like muses from the Renaissance. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. It's voguing. What okay. attracts me to it is the same thing that attracts me to RuPaul's Drag Race, my other big fandom from the past year. <laughs> it's that it's these extreme <laughs> characters that play upon something familiar but bring something completely new to yeah. it. That's what interests me in JoJo and a lot of anime. I like the more serious stuff, but what really attracts me to new media is when it's whenever somebody takes their performance to the next level. That's what really gets me. That's what really intrigues me. So I've been in and out of the whole thing. I I, I enjoyed dubs more than subs for the most part. Same. That's, Fuck with me. That's my admit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I do at a level of integrity as somebody who wants to work in voiceover for dubbing and animation because... Yes, there is definitely a big criticism for it from the early days where it was an afterthought. It was just a, yeah, we need to make this accessible. So just here, here's what right. the script is supposed to Let's be. Let's censor the hell out of it. Um, Classic four kids. But currently, like, the the market in voiceover is so much more, like, entrenched in this. Like, because now you've got people our mm -hmm. age entering this market as well as... You're sort of veteran voice actors who are maybe like five to ten years older than us who maybe grew up with some of it, but were still not too familiar. But they came about right. with the mm -hmm. growth of the industry that it wasn't just a like, yeah, this is just a gig sort of thing. And now you really have creators that are like, right. no, I grew up watching this stuff. Like, even if it wasn't anime at first, it was like very much like cartoons, some form of like that interactivity like through video games or other experiences like that's where i got to this point so now like there's a lot of times where i'm like okay maybe a dub script wise isn't working but there are very few instances where i've watched a dub that's like i don't not like this performance there are definitely some where i'm like personally like i just don't like how this voice right. is believed to suit this character but there are definitely more performances where i'm like no this is fantastic like, I will stand by it. Like, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood dub is one of my favorites. Like, I absolutely people can't, love People can't see me, but I'm dub. dancing. It's so good. <laughs> and the Cowboy Bebop dub is <laughs> like, iconic because of actors like Steve yeah, Bloom, yeah. where it's it's hard to go back. Yes. But they're, like, they're, okay, and there's definitely your ones where you're like, God, I wish you weren't in this show now, but <laughs> your performance was great. Wait a second, just just a quick question. Did I say that I preferred dubs over subs? 
that's an accident. I, I'm so new to the medium that I you actually do prefer subtitles. Wow. I'm sorry. You tricked I, us. Sometimes con. I have a... I actually... You've been That's gatekeeped, girl boss. <laughs> again. Gaslight, no. I'm sorry, I, I totally realized I, I had the mental connection of the two brain cells Jesus. like popping against each other where I just went, Wait, that's not what I meant. I like subtitles because I like listening to the original <laughs> delivery. Ah, uh. that's fair. Like there, and there's definitely moments where it's that like if I am just curious, I might go like look and see what is what is this scene in Bleach sound like where mm. it's subbed. Where what is what do these scenes sound like? But. I don't know. Like, there's a. It's I think of more of a difference in just how we communicate with language. Like, the Japanese language is used in a very particular sense, opposed like to English. Like, tone conveys so much in Japanese because of how words can sound like one another, and not like English can't, but the way we use our language in dubbing especially is like we need to get to the point and we need to let the emotion sit in there but we also need to get to the point of the sentence very true like there it's it's harder i think in english unless you've got a, a director or a writing team that wants to work at playing with it it's harder to get the same kind of poetry out of the lines unless your actor is like really in tune with okay I only have a couple tries at this. How how do we get there? And then how do we keep carrying that through yep. the next and, and the next especially the next. with intense action shows, uh, I, I think something about the Japanese language plays better with that than the English language. Like the two main things being Attack on Titan and uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It was easy to you know get into uh, the English dubbing of my first couple episodes of that show because they take place in England. So, you know, that kind of makes sense. But at wow. the same time, uh, at the same time, I think the, the Japanese language just has that intensity to it that accentuates those moments within action sequences. When people are flying around and cutting Titans up, whenever Jojo is exploring his new stand and getting into a, into a three minute long beat down and all that. I think it's uh, something about that just works very, very well that I, I've just enjoyed more in my, in my short foray into the medium. I just, but there's one, th I just can't get over how terribly betrayed I feel in this mm -hmm. moment. I have to be real. I'm sorry. I, 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 I heal to you not you, you I've hurt me personally and emotionally. <laughs> I, I hit you with a metaphysical chair. Yeah, you hit me with the steel chair in the back. No. And, um, <laughs> Bar God! Bar God! Oh, God. Eric, let let it be chair. known that I, I take this affront uh, personally. And um, uh, for the next three generations, my family will attack yours in uh, spite. So I'll take that. I don't know if that's more anime. Unless you carry <laughs> Madame Zeroni up the I don't mountain. know if that's more anime or Hatfield and McCoy. That's that's the anime we need next. Jai yikes. <laughs> oh my god, no. But no, I I don't think I ever got a, I forgot to answer this question cuz Bo, you talked about your least favorite uh, uh in your time. But most embarrassed or least favorite? Both, both. Both are good. Both. Okay, cuz I thought of my least favorite that I've watched it was I I couldn't even finish were um <laughs> Sword Art Online. S A O. It had so much potential, and then you just made it a whiny boy fest over everything <laughs> going on in the world. Like, oh. That was the first show where I went, this guy doesn't have any character. Yeah. Um,. This is a wet. This is a wet paper bag as our main protagonist. That and Kill a Kill gave me the same energy. Kaylee, we're on the same page. Oh, come on, man. And maybe, maybe for me that was my sort of critic, like because Bleach has characters where it's like, right. eh, Rongiku is just boob jokes. Great, I guess. But yeah. Kill a Kill was one of those where I'm like, there is. This is the point. But but 
but animates <laughs> idiots. I mean, sure. You and I are actually on the same page here because even as a high schooler, a friend was showing me sword art online and I just went, this is kind of boring. There's a lot of laser swords and it's a video game where everybody can die once yeah. you're in there. This is really boring. <laughs> like, it's one of those where it's like, it's okay. The first, like, first season-ish, first couple episodes, and then, If it's yeah, your it first show, drops off. you won't notice how boring it is. But if it's your second, which for me in high school, it kind of was, I was just like, eh. And I, too, watched one episode of Kill a Kill and said, I don't like this. I really don't like... <laughs> I don't care I don't for this over-sexualization <laughs> of these female characters where she's wearing, yeah. a, like, I know it's the point. So the, I know it's a satire. So, yeah. No, so, so I'm interrupting. So the... <laughs> <laughs> Let him speak. The, the allegory there is, yeah, it's supposed to satirize, mm -hmm. like, um, so, shoujo, like, yeah. uh, Sailor Moon shit and whatnot. It's also a very, very loose allegory for uh puberty and getting mm -hmm. comfortable with your body yeah there's a ton of anime titties its target <laughs> audience is 13 year old boys yeah. i will defend kill a kill it <laughs> sucks it's bad i've but seen I'll some beautiful it. cosplay from it though like i'll be absolutely like i love seeing people cosplay from it though because i'm like i i'm amazed you can pull this off like that's amazing <laughs> you've somehow managed if to you, get this through con screening and security and you still look damn good <laughs> if you haven't watched anything from that studio studio trigger mm -hmm. um then yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> well, like also, oh my god, they're the same ones that did uh, Gurren Lagan. Yeah, I was gonna say Gurren Gurren Lagan, Gurren Lagan. Yeah. That's one that's been on my list for ages too. Yeah. Where it's that like I just need to go backwards and watch things. I don't need to keep up with what's going yep. on now. I need to go backwards. After feeling attacked so much, <laughs> I am ending the episode because you guys are fucking assholes. Aww, there, no. we said it. I stood up for all the weebs. Y'all, this has been the first episode of the Liberal Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you if you liked uh, if you liked the episode, go ahead and let us know. What was your favorite anime? Your first? Your most regrettable decision? What are you most embarrassed about, you degenerate weeaboos? I know that you're <laughs> hugging on to your it, Asuka pillow. It. She's 14, Stop you pervert. It, no. Leave the pillows out of this. <laughs> Stop. Join us next time when we talk about different shit. Peace. The Liberal Artists Podcast premieres every other Thursday on your favorite podcasting platform. The show is hosted by Bodhi Opapula, Kaylee Horowitz, and Andy Gibson. You can find the show at Lib Artists Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks to White Hot for performing the theme song Reflect, which can be found on freebeats.io. Now, I'm off to go exploring, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, I'll find a sheep that I can call my own. Good day. All right. Take it away, Bojack yeah. Horseman. Yay. I hated that. Every single <laughs> You're the part one of that. going. <laughs> we have to cancel Don't blame everything me. again. We're taking it down. <laughs> um, fuck.
What, what, what I like is just being able to explore a story from a different culture's viewpoint and how they view their heroes, mm -hmm. how they view antagonists, things like that. 